Okay, so welcome to this next video on P53 and uh, the response to um, DNA damage, basically. So we've looked now at the cell cycle, we've looked at the different phases of the cell cycle, and we've looked at the big picture of what is happening in each of these phases. Okay, what we now need to look at is how the different uh, cycle-independent kinases are involved in the different phases of the cell cycle. Okay, so let me get another piece of paper and we'll discuss that. So, um, if we have, uh, if we plot one of these graphs where we have time on the x-axis and we'll have the different phases of the cell cycle. So let's say this is G1, this is S phase, this is G2, and this is M phase. And we won't put interphase because that's not really an active um, stage of the cell cycle. Then if we look at the levels of the different cyclin-dependent kinases, well, cyclin-cyclin-dependent kinase complexes, then uh, uh, initially in the first growth phase, what happens is the level of um, a uh, cyclin, uh, cyclin dependent kinase complex goes up. And this specific uh, cyclin cyclin dependent kinase complex is the cyclin D CDK4 complex. Okay, so uh, cyclin D CDK4 complexes then. So cyclin D CDK4 complexes consist of cyclin D bound to the CDK4 enzyme. Okay, and when cyclin D binds to the CDK4 enzyme, the CDK4 enzyme becomes active, and it's then known as a cyclin D CDK4 complex. This is our cyclin D, okay, and uh, this is our CDK4 enzyme here, which I'll show in green. So this is our CDK4 enzyme. Okay, right. So. Uh, so when, um, when you have cyclin D bound to CDK4, it's also known as a G1 CDK, right? And its role, its role is very important in this transition between G1 and S, because when its level goes up, as you can see, its level goes up and up as you approach this G1 S checkpoint. As it goes up, it starts to phosphorylate the retinoblastoma proteins. Let me draw that here. Okay, so this is the retinoblastoma protein here, and when the retinoblastoma protein is unphosphorylated, i.e. before the level of this um, enzyme goes up, uh, the retinoblastoma protein holds on to uh, a dimer, basically, a dimer of an E2F transcription factor with its dimerization partner, DP. Okay, so um, let's show the DP in red here and we'll have E2F in orange. Okay, and now we've got this um, RB protein, this retinoblastoma protein, which is sequestering uh, these, um, this dimerization of these two um, proteins. And these basically together, this dimer of E2F with its dimerization partner, this DP protein, um, is an extremely powerful transcription factor. So DP, remember, stands for dimerization partner of E2F transcription factors. So I'll just write dimerization partner. And this here is the E2F transcription factor. Okay, uh, so um, as I say, in a cell which is inactive, which is not dividing, the E2F transcription factor with its um, transcription factor, that should say, transcription factor with its dimerization partner are held sequestered by this retinoblastoma protein, uh, which is usually just denoted RB. So this is retinoblastoma protein. So we'll just denote that RB. Okay. And um, basically, in order to move from the G1 to the S phase, you need to release this E2F uh, DP complex. Now, basically, what happens is that cyclin D CDK4 complexes, or this G1 CDK enzyme, which is this complex of both of them together, I want to stress that, the G1 CDK is not CDK4, it's the complex of the two together. This complex, uh, can phosphorylate the retinoblastoma protein and in so doing change its conformation. So I'll draw this like this. So 
By phosphorylating this retinoblastoma protein, it can change the conformation of the retinoblastoma protein. And when retinoblastoma protein changes conformation, that causes it to release these E2F transcription factors with their dimerization partner. So E2F and its dimerization partner is going to come off, basically. So here's E2F and here is its dimerization partner. So they've been released, basically. Okay, and when this happens, uh, those E2F, the E2F transcription factor and its dimerization partner will move the cell from uh, the G1 to the S phase of the cell cycle. And we'll look at how in a moment. But the important thing is that this cyclin D, CDK4 complex, is very, very much so responsible for the movement from G1 to S phase. So it needs to accumulate in the uh, cell in order for you to move from G1 to S phase. Now, this P21 protein, which was transcribed, um, which uh, was um, um, activated, well, had its expression uh, improved, increased uh, by uh, P53, that is going to bind to CDK4. We saw that it um, binds to CDK4 here. So it binds to CDK4, and when it binds to CDK4, it's going to stop CDK4 from being able to bind to cyclin D. So you're going to get fewer cyclin D CDK4 complexes. So basically, once P53 is activated, and that leads to P21 being activated, the, G, um, the G1 CDK level within the cell is going to plummet. And that's going to make it impossible, basically, to move from G1 to S phase. So it's going to block a cell that's in G1 phase of the cell cycle moving into the S phase. So it's going to block uh, the cell uh, synthesizing uh, DNA. Well, sorry, re uh, well, replicating DNA. Okay, now there's another uh, way in which P21 also blocks the movement from G1S because there's another um, cyclin, cyclin-dependent kinase complex involved in the G1S transition. And this is um, the cyclin E CDK2 complex. So um, here, what I'm showing now is the levels of the cyclin E CDK2 complex. So this graph here shows the level of cyclin E CDK2 complex. Okay, right. So um, as you can see, the cyclin E CDK2 complex level spikes at this G1S transition, and that inspires its name. It's known as the G1S CDK. So it's only high within the cell when uh, you move from the G1 phase to the S phase. And again, I want to just stress that the G1S CDK is not the name for CDK2. It's not just another name for CDK2. It means cyclin E bound to CDK2. So let's draw cyclin E bound to CDK2 down here. OK, so here's cyclin E, and here's the CDK2 protein here. So this is cyclin-dependent kinase 2 down here. And let me just move this up. So that's cyclin-dependent kinase 2, and it's bound to cyclin E. Right, so uh, this cyclin E CDK2 complex here, and I want to colour it in. So we'll have cyclin E in pink, and we'll have CDK2, or cyclin-dependent kinase 2, in orange. Right, so what is this enzyme doing? What is its function? It seems to be uh, involved in the G1S transition because it's spiking at the G1S transition. But what does it do? Well, basically, uh, it phosphorylates and inactivates another tumor suppressor protein by the name of P27. Okay, so let's draw P27 here. And P27... Um, is much like P21, except that it's specific to cyclin, um, uh, well, sorry, to cyclin-dependent kinase 4. So it, P27 is a protein which binds to cyclin-dependent kinase 4 and stops it from being able to interact with cyclin D, basically. Okay, so this protein here is P27. Okay, binding to the CDK4 protein and stopping it from uh, being able to bind with cyclin D. Okay, so 
what does the cyclin ECDK2 complexes do? Well, basically, they phosphorylate the P27 protein. So they're going to take this P27 protein and they're going to add a phosphate group to it. After all, they are a kinase enzyme. And when they add that phosphate group to it, uh, the P27 is going to be unable to bind P, uh, CDK4 anymore. So, basically, what's going to happen is when the levels of this cyclin E CDK2 complex go up at the G1S transition, it, uh, this complex uh, phosphorylates and inactivates P27. That releases the CD4 from the inhibition by P27. CD4 can then bind with cyclin D and form cyclin D CDK4 complexes, which are then capable of um, phosphorylating the retinoblastoma protein and releasing the E2F uh, DP complex. So basically, this spike here is responsible for increasing uh, the level of cyclin D CDK4 complexes. In addition, this um, kinase, this cyclin E CDK2 complex, is also capable of directly phosphorylating retinoblastoma protein. So that's another way in which it can uh, promote the movement from G1 to S. Although it's slightly less famous for doing this than cyclin D CDK4. So this one is thought to be the main uh, cyclin, cyclin dependent kinase, which um, phosphorylates and inactivates retinoblastoma rather than cyclin E CDK4. CDK4, uh, CDK2, and the main role, way in which cyclin E CDK2 is fought to inactivate retinoblastoma is through this indirect pathway by activating cyclin D CDK4 complexes. Okay, right. So, uh, P21 then. P21 also uh, binds to CDK2 enzymes. So we saw it binding to these CDK2 enzymes and uh, stops it, basically, from being able to bind to cyclin E. So if it can't bind to cyclin E, then you don't form these cyclin E CDK4, sorry, CDK2 complexes, and therefore you don't get this inhibition of P27, and therefore you don't get the rise in uh, cyclin D CDK4 um, complexes in the cell, and also you don't get uh, this cop complex, this cyclin E CDK2 complex, directly phosphorylating the retinoblastoma protein. So again, this function is going to help it stop a cell that is in the G1 phase moving from the G1 to the S phase of the cell cycle. Okay, so let's move on. Let's look at the next stage of the cell cycle. So that's how um, P21 is going to stop you from moving from G1 to S phase if you're in the G1 phase. Now let's look at the next phase of the cell cycle. So basically, E2F uh, DP complexes here, the, the way they move you from G1 to S phase is uh, they increase the expression of uh, cyclin A, basically. So they're going to bind to the promoter region known as an EF yeah, sorry, an E2F box, and they're going to increase the expression of this protein cyclin A. Okay, now cyclin A is going to associate with this cyclin-dependent kinase 2 to form cyclin A CDK2 complexes. Okay, and this enzyme, these enzymes, these cyclin A CDK2 enzymes are responsible for most of what happens in S phase. So this is a cyclin A CDK2 complex. Okay, and that also has another name. It's often known as the S-CDK. Right, so if we were to plot S-CDK on this graph, we'd see its levels going up, basically, in the S phase of the cell cycle. Now, it turns out that cyclin D-CDK4 also remains high through S phase. Okay, like so. Right, so let's cover that other one in so that we don't confuse it. So let's have it in orange. So this graph in orange now is going to represent the levels of our SCDK, which remember is this cyclin, um, cyclin A uh, with its CDK2, so the cyclin A CDK2 complex. Okay, so let's draw cyclin A in orange here. And we'll have cyclin-dependent kinase 2. Oh, it was in orange as well, but never mind. I'm not drawing both of them in orange, so I'll draw it in blue now. So this is our cyclin A CDK2 complex. 
Okay, and now this enzyme is responsible for altering the pre-replication complexes so that they are now uh, fit for uh, DNA polymerase to come in and bind to. So DNA polymerase will come into, the, um, into these pre-replication complexes, bind to them, and begin the replication of the DNA. So it begins the um, replication of the DNA, basically. So it causes origin firing. It causes the copying of the DNA. Okay, now, again, P21 binds to cyclin-dependent kinase 2. And if it does that, then cyclin A is not going to be able to bind to CDK2. So you will not get the cyclin A CDK2 complexes forming, and therefore you won't be able to activate origin firing, and you won't be able to activate DNA replication. So, um, basically, again, P21 is going to stop you uh, replicating the DNA. It's going to halt the replication of DNA. Okay, by inhibiting this cyclin-dependent kinase 2 from being able to bind with its cyclin A. Okay, so that's um, that phase of the cell cycle. In the next video, what we'll talk about is um, how um, cyclin, well, how uh, P21 inhibiting the cyclin-dependent kinase 1 is going to prevent uh, the uh, progression through the N phase of the cell cycle.